Hey guys, welcome to Career Day brought to you by Square. Today we're talking with Gen Z entrepreneurs to learn how they bet on themselves and start their own business. I'm super psyched about today's episode. We're gonna be talking to Kelsey Davis, CEO and founder of Collective. And she's gonna talk to us about how to monetize your creativity, how to set up an LLC, and how to hustle and make connections. Thank you so much to Square for sponsoring this series and for giving small businesses the tools they need to thrive. Let's go talk to Kelsey. Kelsey is a Syracuse graduate with a master's degree from the Women's School of Management. She started Collective when she was 20 years old, she's been featured in Forbes 30 under 30, and she's basically a badass in every way. Welcome to Collective HQ. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So Kelsey, you're doing a lot of really cool stuff that we're super inspired by. Can you tell us what your company Collective does and sort of what you do? So Collective, uh, we are the portfolio platform that connects creators to their next opportunity. Um, and so if you're a creator, you really want to figure out how to communicate who you are and what you do um, and how to connect with other creators or to brands to then get to your next opportunity. You're probably posting your content on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube, on TikTok to try to distribute that out to your audiences. Uh, but where's the one place that you send everybody to so that they can easily just see in one place all of your content curated by you? And so we really see ourselves as the home for creators to really build their world and then ultimately use that information to then connect and match to their next opportunity. That sounds super cool. Why'd you take that risk to sort of leave what you're doing before and start your own company? Prior to Collective, I was a full-time college student uh, studying television, radio, and film at Syracuse University, uh, getting my minor in innovation design and startups, uh, while also being a full-time visual content creator for global consumer brands like Coca-Cola, Land Rover, Puma, it got to a point where I just couldn't juggle all of that bandwidth by myself. It was definitely a risk to kind of step away from thinking about myself as an independent creator. But when I really saw this larger opportunity, I thought, okay, well, let me continue directing and doing that while studying and doing research and learning about the technology side of things. There were definitely risks involved in that transition period, but I think that's why it's important to have a certain level of foresight um, and create as many opportunities to leverage as possible so that even though it's a risk, uh, it's still pretty calculated and optimal. You know, our mission at Collective is to empower creators to create the life they want, mm -hmm. right? We have our ideas and we have all these different skills that we have. How do we just monetize on our human capabilities across the board? Was that like scary at all, that whole process? I think it was scary, um, but it's interesting. So I used to be an athlete, um, and so I was actually on the track to go D1, going to the WNBA. That was like my vision, that was my goal. But I actually think that was the first time that I had to overcome the fear of, you know, hey, I had this identity that I was committed to, yet I don't feel fulfilled, right? Okay, if you're not playing basketball, like what are we gonna do, right? And how do we become the best at that? Part of honestly being a good freelancer, being a good business person is being a good decision maker. It's definitely difficult, but um, there's no better feeling than like trusting in yourself and seeing that through. No, sure. I agree. And I think it's interesting that you've had like multiple kind of like, you went from sports to film, then film to tech, right? Yeah. When I first did that uh, jump from school to YouTube, I thought, okay, that's it. But like, it's constantly evolving, and I think it never gets easier, if you like. It's always still very scary, but it is your truth. But obviously, it's still a, a scary journey, but that's why you have team. We all have fear. You can't run from that. You have to actually acknowledge it and face it. It's something me and my co-founder do all the time. We'll literally every Saturday, like we have retro meetings and we'll ask like, what are we afraid of? Like what hurdle are we not acknowledging right now? Um, and the quicker that we get there, the quicker that we can overcome. This is where the magic happens. This is the office. Uh, it's kind of our space to, uh, you know, be ours. When we moved here, we really wanted to have the perfect co-living, co-working environment. And so it was important for us to just create a space where we're just focused on work, right? So uh, we have some like studio stuff here. Obviously, like we do stuff within production, also tech. So just really use the space to work, create, uh, take meetings and um, yeah. So one of my favorite things to talk about on my YouTube channel is monetization, uh, side hustles, just making money, all that stuff. So I just kind of want to get your opinion on what's the best way for creators to monetize their creativity. First thing, know your why. When it comes to monetizing yourself as a creator, it really comes down to how are you monetizing your human IP? Mm -hmm. So I think that really has to do with knowing who you are, knowing your why, and knowing what you have the ability to create. People come up to me all the time, for example, right? And they're like, hey, like I'm a creative, like can I work with you? And I'm like, cool. like. Who are you and what do you do? 
right? And often there's just like, uh, I make videos. And it's like, cool, like for what, for whom, what type of videos, like what are you good at, right? So really being able to articulate succinctly like who you are, what you do, and like know your why. I think after that, it's really being able to succinctly create a portfolio so that people could easily interact with you, connect with you, and engage with you. And then I think the last thing is going out and understanding how to connect with brands, how to get paid, right? Now it's a matter of like understanding how to actually create an invoice, creating an LLC, which is important. Uh, monetization is, is meaning as an individual, you figured out a way to engineer and architect a way to create revenue streams for yourself. So that could be through YouTube, right? Um, that could be through streams, that could be through business partnerships, sponsorships, um, that could be through freelancing. Monetization is a way that you're able to make money as anything uh, by doing what you're good at. You said the thing about starting the LLC, right? I feel like that's something that's very actionable that a lot of the viewers could start doing today or tomorrow. How do you start up an LLC? So first step of setting up an LLC is you actually need a name, right? Sounds super simple, but the reason why it's really important to think about it is because you wanna make sure that it's actually going to be verified by the state. If it's a name that already exists, especially within that industry, you'll get pushed back and you'll have to find a new name. That then goes into your second step, which is filing for your articles of organization. This basically means you're getting documentation from the state that recognizes you as a legitimate legal entity. So last step, number three, is going to be creating an operating agreement. And so your operating agreement is a legal agreement between yourself and the company. And so whether you're operating as a sole proprietorship, uh, you know, single LLC, and you're the only member, or if you have other managing members that are part of that multi-member LLC, you're going to want an operating agreement. Um, because this really governs, you know, if anything happens in the company, you've pre-decided what's going to happen because it protects you. Uh, as a managing member of the LLC, and that's ultimately why LLCs are so cool and important. So I see a lot of new entrepreneurs working on the day-to-day -day grind, but entrepreneurship can be pretty lonely. So what are your tips on like networking to other people? Yeah, for sure. I think networking is super important. It's super crucial, right? That's really the only way that you're actually able to connect to that next opportunity, right? Especially when you're an entrepreneur. And so you wanna network not only in relation to finding different opportunities to get paid, um, but also opportunities to support yourself, right? So whether that has to do with potentially investors, right? Um, brands, customers, mentors, advisors, right? And so I think networking is a key part to making sure you really have the resources in the community to support yourself as a freelancer or as an entrepreneur. We know that we want to connect with brands to get paid. But in order to do that in a way that ultimately gives us back autonomy, we want to learn how to we find collaborate so that we can actually start doing this on our own and creating our own projects. I think what you guys are saying about finding like-minded peers is something that's super, super important. No, I'm like super shy. And I think a lot of people watching this might be shy too. What are your tips for overcoming that fear? I think that's super normal and that's okay. As an entrepreneur, you're really selling a product, right? And so oftentimes you're product itself could actually be what's selling you more than the words out of your mouth itself. And I think that's why it's more important to have a product that can easily just communicate for you, right? So that you can focus more so on growing your business um, and less about, you know, a lot of the in-person things that aren't even really scalable in the long run. For me, I think networking can seem super intimidating. At the end of the day, people want to work with like kind people and good people. So I think it's about having that portfolio ready so that when a project comes up or, you know, there's an opportunity and they, the first thing they think of is, oh, I, ha I know this person, let me introduce you. And networking happens naturally. What I found that works well for me is just reaching out to people on social media that I look up to or that I want to, you know, connect with. Uh, and then we build a friendship there. And then once you meet one person, you sort of can meet their friends and it just sort of snowballs like that. And that's definitely been one of like the best things I've ever done in my entrepreneurial journey. What would you say is the biggest thing holding young entrepreneurs back today? Fear, honestly, mm -hmm. doubt, um, because it's not the technology. You have everything that you need uh, in order to create, and that doesn't mean that you have what you need to create at the scale that you want to create, um, but you do have the basic minimals to put something out there. And so I would say start there, um, get feedback, and continue to do that until you find a route that makes sense and until you learn who your audience is and then hopefully create an LLC around mm, that. Yes. <laughs> so now it's been a couple years of your journey. If you had the chance to talk to your younger self, what advice would you give? Keep creating. Um, is what I would say, and don't allow fear to disable you to create the life you want.
Hell yes. Yes, I love that. No, seriously. You like that, Brendan? That was good, right? <laughs> <laughs> good. But with that, thank you so much for talking to us. But time is money, so we'll let you get back to work. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for swinging by. <laughs> Thanks again to Collective CEO Kelsey for all the knowledge she shared about how to monetize your creativity, set up an LLC, as well as how to hustle and make connections. Head to Square's website where they provide all the tips and info you need, like how to start and grow your own business. And be sure to subscribe for more Curry Day episodes to learn how you can bet on yourself. Thanks, guys. Until next time. <laughs> like, okay, okay. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I didn't know that.